B is the Institutional Review Board, and we review all the human subjects research applications that are submitted by faculty, students, and staff. So we review the applications to make sure that all the risks, potential risks to participants are minimized, that participants are being adequately consented, informed, and uh, the, or the uh, investigators are, are educated uh, in conducting human subjects research. It's a requirement in the federal regulations governing human subjects research to obtain written informed consent anytime you're interacting with a human subject for the purposes of conducting research. So therefore, um, it's a requirement across the country, um, it's a requirement of any faculty, student, or staff member who meets the definition, who is actively engaged in human subjects research. There's a misconception about informed consent that it's just a form that participants sign. And that's incorrect. That's only a small part of the consent process. And that's what we want to project to our faculty, students, and staff members is that uh, informed consent is a process with participants. Consent is throughout the entire course of a participant's participation in a research project. So at the start, you'll have them sign the written informed consent document. Over the course of the study, they can ask questions. They're certainly free to withdraw, which is present in the consent form. Um, and in some cases, if you change the procedures or the risk change or anything like that, uh, they'll have to be added to the consent form, and you may have to reconsent participants uh, during the course of the study. The first reason and foremost reason that they should be concerned about informed consent is that uh, if you're asking someone to volunteer to participate in research, to answer questions, to give you their opinions, to be stuck with a needle, uh, to be poked and prodded and scanned, um, they're giving you their time, in most cases for zero compensation. Um, and you'd think out of the goodness of their hearts. And when you take advantage of someone's generosity, it sets a bad example for you and the rest of the research community and anyone who wants to conduct research with human subjects and to advance science and to advance uh, thought and theory. Another reason why students, faculty, and staff members should be concerned about written informed consent is that it protects not only them and the institution, but it protects the subject by letting them know you're going to be doing X, Y, and Z in this study, or we're asking you to do X, Y, and Z. It's also letting the participant know that they can stop at any time, or if they're filling out a questionnaire that has a hundred questions and ten of them are about their, you know, use of drugs or sexual activity, that they don't have to answer any question that makes them feel uncomfortable. Um, it builds the relationship between the participant and the researcher and it helps facilitate that for years down the road for the next generation who will participate. Um, there are entire groups of people today that are extremely suspicious of researchers conducting any type of research and they won't participate in research. You know, partly due to uh, the Henry, Henrietta Lacks situation and the Tuskegee syphilis, syphilis experiments and the recent um, reporting of the Guatemala syphilis study, um, or STD study, I should say, uh, in the late 40s. So I think it's your duty as a researcher to continue to facilitate those bonds and the, the growth of the participant-researcher relationship. The, the best thing that you can do if you, are, if you are a student at the University of Maryland or at any university and you're thinking about using human subjects um, is to find out where your IRB office is on campus and talk to the resident experts on human subjects protections and enrolling human subjects into studies. Uh, you want to make sure that you're going through the right channels to protect yourself and protect the institution and above all protect the human subjects that you'll be interacting with. One thing that I always tell students that I speak with and faculty members is you may think that your project doesn't need to come through the IRB but there's a reason why we have IRB offices on campuses across the country. It's to have people who have the knowledge 
give you advice and to make, sh make that decision for you, to make sure that you're going through the right channels. And if it doesn't require IRB review, they'll tell you. It's always safer not to make that decision on your own. Um, I also always tell students, utilize your resources. And here at College Park, the IRB office is located in 1204 Marie Mount Hall. And we're open 8.30 to 4.30 and always available by email. Never hesitate to call. Um, we're here. We're here to help.